opportunity to uh, make some comments on the most recent EU Council meeting in, in Brussels a fortnight ago. Um, I think it's only right that Russia's illegal war in Ukraine would dominate proceedings and the agenda. I think that's completely appropriate and, uh, uh, and to be expected. Um, I welcome the EU's ongoing con condemnation of the unnecessary conflict, the statement that the war will end tomorrow if Russian Federation withdraw and uh, invoke a unilat unilateral ceasefire. Uh, I welcome the EU's condemnation on the, the mass deportation and the forced deportation of civilians to both the Belarus and, uh, and to Russia, and particularly concerning is that of, of children. Um, and I also welcome their condemnation on the destruction of the dam on the Dnipro River, which not only was a massive humanitarian and ecological catastrophe, but also put at risk the cooling system of the Zaporizhzhia uh, nuclear power plant. Um, I'd like to endorse the fact and, and approve of the fact that there's going to be an increase in European peace facility funding, um, and that the, the EU military training mission is ongoing. Um, as well. I just want to commend our own Defence Force personnel who were in Cyprus a couple of months back uh, training Ukrainian troops how to demine, um, and those that went to Germany last week uh, to train Ukrainian troops on, on tactical uh, combat casualty care. Um, finally then, just to welcome as well the accountability piece. I think when you're dealing with authoritarian states, the, the internal checks and, uh, checks and balances that would normally be in a democratic country don't exist. So it's important we have the external checks and balances from, from that perspective. So I do welcome the EU support for the International Criminal Tribunal in The Hague um, and also this register that's being established in relation to the destruction of Ukrainian property so that appropriate reparations can be paid uh, post-conflict and thereafter. Um, more broadly, Minister, just regionally, uh, I suppose the big concern I have would be in, in relation to the, the Black Sea Grain Initiative. Um, that's up for renewal next week and there's no guarantee it'll be rolled over. Um, I welcome Turkey's statement, at least, that even if Russia does withdraw from the deal, which is a hugely important deal from a food security perspective, but if they do withdraw, if Russia withdraws, that at least Turkey has undertaken, at least, to conduct uh, security operations and to escort these grain ships uh, through the sea lanes, through the Black Sea, uh, and onto Istanbul. So I think that's a good thing, uh, at least. Um, but also just to, to pass comment on the, the NATO uh, addition of Finland recently um, and the most likely addition of Sweden uh, in the not too distant future. Again, NATO can do whatever they, they want to do. It's not really of massive relevance to us, but it does underscore to me the complete strategic failure of, of Putin's initiative uh, in the last 18 months. So not only has there been massive tactical defeat uh, on the battlefield, but also strategically he's been completely uh, outperformed, outfoxed and, and outmaneuvered as well. Um, in relation to the, the readout from the EU Council report, uh, Minister, I'm, not, I'm not sure was it discussed at the table or not, but there doesn't seem to be any concern expressed in relation to the internal instability in Russia. Um, and I think we should have at least have a contingency plan in place. We're dealing with a, a very large nuclear armed state, which has had a number of upheavals in the last, even the last number of decades. And I think the EU should have a, a plan in place, and Ireland should have a plan in place as well to deal with any downstream consequences. Just my final point is in relation to China, and I'm glad to see it featured on the, the agenda. And I think Ireland's policy and EU's policy would be quite uh, aligned that China does simultaneously, it is a partner, it is a competitor, and it is a rival. Um, but I do share the EU's concerns in relation to tensions in the Taiwan Strait. Um, and I think we're right to oppose any unilateral change in the status quo by, by force or by, by coercion. I think that's completely appropriate. But there's, there's two issues I'd like to raise in particular, uh, Minister, and that Ireland did actually have an office in Taipei, a trade office, uh, under the EU umbrella uh, up to 2012. And my understanding was it was wound down for financial cost reasons. Uh, that was 10 years ago, and I don't think the same excuse uh, holds. So I would very much be in favour of Ireland opening up an additional, not an additional, but reopening the, the office that was there. There's about 15 EU countries represented in one building over there, and I don't see why, why Ireland isn't represented. And it's entirely consistent with our One China policy as well. We have multiple trade uh, consulates and embassies uh, in Canada, for instance, in the different states in Canada, the different states in the US, uh, different states in Australia. Um, I, I don't see why we, can, we, we can't have two uh, offices in China, one in Beijing and, and, and one in Taipei. We've done it in the past and I presume that was the same principle that was uh, observed and applied uh, a couple of decades ago when we, when we opened it up. The second issue is in relation to the World Health Organization, that Taiwan is trying to become a member of it, just observer status. 
Um, I think Ireland should be supportive of that. Taiwan was instrumental uh, in providing PPE to Ireland when we needed it most back at the height of the pandemic. They asked for nothing in return. And I think they have a lot to offer the WHO, and I think it's something that Ireland should, should certainly support. So there are two issues, Minister. I think Ireland should consider reopening the trade office that it had up to 2012 in Taipei, uh, and also we should support uh, observer status for Taiwan in the, the World Health Organization. So in summary, Chair, just to, uh, I think that the, the most recent EU Council meeting was a qualified yeah. success. There is some, some moderate progress there, and I look forward to the next EU Council meeting later in the summer. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you, Chair.